Welcome to today's NCLEX questions session. We're diving into 10 trending questions to boost your clinical knowledge and test taking skills. Be sure to check out our free practice challenge and access our QBank by clicking the link in the YouTube card above. Let's dive in and level up your nursing expertise. Question one, a nurse is caring for a post-operative patient who is receiving an opioid analgesic for pain relief. The nurse notes that the patient's respiratory rate is eight breaths per minute. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer naloxone, Narcan, to reverse the opioid effect. B. Increase the oxygen flow rate and monitor the patient's pulse oximetry. C. Withhold the next dose of opioid and notify the healthcare provider. D. Encourage the patient to take deep breaths to increase oxygenation. The correct answer is C. Withhold the next dose of opioid and notify the healthcare provider. Rationale for correct answer. A respiratory rate of 8 breaths per minute is significantly low, indicating opioid-induced respiratory depression. The first priority is to withhold further opioid doses and notify the healthcare provider. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Administer naloxone, Narcan, to reverse the opioid effect. Naloxone may be required if the respiratory depression is severe, but the first step is to assess the situation and contact the healthcare provider. B. Increase the oxygen flow rate and monitor the patient's pulse oximetry. Oxygen therapy is important, but addressing the underlying cause by withholding the opioid is the priority. D. Encourage the patient to take deep breaths to increase oxygenation. While deep breathing can help, it will not reverse significant respiratory depression caused by opioids. Clinique RN Test Day Tip Always assess the respiratory rate before administering opioids. If the rate is below 12 breaths per minute, immediately assess the patient and notify the healthcare provider. Question 2. A nurse is caring for a patient who is receiving continuous enteral feeding via a nasogastric tube. The patient is reporting nausea and bloating. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Decrease the rate of feeding. B. Administer an antiemetic as prescribed. C. Check for tube placement and residual volume. D. Discontinue the feeding immediately. The correct answer is C. Check for tube placement and residual volume. Rationale for correct answer. Nausea and bloating can occur if the tube is improperly placed or if the feeding is not being absorbed. Checking tube placement and residual volume is the first step to assess for complications. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Decrease the rate of the feeding. Decreasing the rate may help, but it is important first to check the tube placement and residual volume. B. Administer an antiemetic as prescribed. Administering an antiemetic might be helpful, but will not address the potential underlying cause of the symptoms. D. Discontinue the feeding immediately. Discontinuing the feeding may be necessary, depending on the findings, but the priority is to check the tube and residual volume. Clinique RN Test Day Tip In patients receiving enteral feeding, always check for proper tube placement and residual volumes if they experience nausea or bloating. This can prevent complications like aspiration. Question 3. A nurse is caring for a patient with a history of asthma who is receiving a nebulized albuterol treatment. The patient reports feeling jittery and anxious. What is the nurse's best action? A. Encourage the patient to relax and breathe deeply. B. Monitor the patient's heart rate and blood pressure. C. Discontinue the treatment and notify the healthcare provider. D. Administer a sedative to alleviate the anxiety. The correct answer is B. Monitor the patient's heart rate and blood pressure. Rationale for correct answer. Albuterol can cause tachycardia and anxiety as side effects. The nurse should monitor the patient's vital signs to assess the severity of these effects. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Encourage the patient to relax and breathe deeply. While relaxation may help, 
Monitoring vital signs is a more appropriate response to symptoms of jitteriness and anxiety after albuterol use. C. Discontinue the treatment and notify the healthcare provider. Discontinuing the treatment may not be necessary unless the symptoms are severe or the vital signs are abnormal. D. Administer a sedative to alleviate the anxiety. Sedatives should be avoided as they can interfere with respiratory function and may worsen the patient's condition. Clinique RN Test Day Tip Albuterol can increase heart rate and cause jitteriness. Always monitor vital signs, especially in patients with a history of cardiovascular issues or anxiety. Question 4. A nurse is caring for a patient with a new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. The patient asks about lifestyle changes to help manage blood sugar levels. Which of the following statements indicates a need for further education? A. I will need to monitor my blood glucose levels daily. B. I can eat whatever I want as long as I take my insulin. C. I should incorporate more fiber into my diet. D. I should aim for regular exercise to improve my blood sugar control. The correct answer is B. I can eat whatever I want as long as I take my insulin. Rationale for correct answer. While insulin therapy is important, lifestyle changes, including dietary modifications, are crucial for managing blood sugar levels and diabetes. The patient must understand the importance of balancing diet and medication. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. I will need to monitor my blood glucose levels daily. This is correct. Regular monitoring is essential for managing type 2 diabetes effectively. C. I should incorporate more fiber in my diet. This is correct. A high-fiber diet can help control blood sugar levels and improve overall health. D. I should aim for regular exercise to improve my blood sugar control. This is correct. Exercise is an important component of managing diabetes and improving insulin sensitivity. Clinique RN Test Day Tip Educate patients with diabetes on the importance of a balanced approach that includes medication, diet, and exercise to manage blood glucose levels effectively. Question 5. A nurse is caring for a patient who is receiving an IV infusion of normal saline. The nurse notes that the infusion rate has slowed significantly and the IV site is swollen and red. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Remove the IV catheter and insert a new one in the opposite arm. B. Increase the IV infusion rate to flush the line. C. Notify the healthcare provider about the four complications. D. Apply a warm compress to the IV site. The correct answer is A. Remove the IV catheter and insert a new one in the opposite arm. Rationale for correct answer. The signs of swelling and redness indicate that the IV site may be infiltrated or infected. The catheter should be removed and a new site should be established to prevent further complications. Rationale for incorrect answers. B. Increase the IV infusion rate to flush the line. Increasing the rate could exacerbate the infiltration or cause further damage to the tissue. C. Notify the healthcare provider about the IV complications. While notifying the healthcare provider is important, the first step is to address the site complications immediately by removing the catheter. D. Apply a warm compress to the IV site. A warm compress may help with some symptoms, but the priority is to remove the IV and assess the site. Clinique RN Test Day Tip When signs of infiltration or infection occur in IV site, immediately stop the infusion, remove the catheter, and assess the site for further complications. Question 6. A nurse is caring for a patient with a history of heart failure who is receiving a loop diuretic. The nurse notes that the patient's potassium level is 2.9 milliequivalent per liter. What should the nurse do first? A. Administer potassium supplements as prescribed. B. Increase the dosage of the diuretic to enhance fluid loss. C. Monitor the patient's blood pressure for hypotension. D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately and withhold the diuretic. The correct answer is A. 
administer potassium supplements as prescribed. Rationale for correct answer. Hypokalemia, potassium level of 2.9 milliequivalent per liter, can cause serious cardiac arrhythmias and should be corrected immediately with potassium supplementation. Rationale for incorrect answers. B. Increase the dosage of the diuretic to enhance fluid loss. Increasing the dose could worsen hypokalemia and cause more serious complications. C. Monitor the patient's blood pressure for hypotension. While blood pressure is important, correcting the potassium level takes priority to prevent arrhythmias. D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately and withhold the diuretic. The healthcare provider should be notified, but the immediate intervention is potassium replacement. Clinique RN Test Day Tip When caring for patients on diuretics, always monitor electrolyte levels closely. Correcting hypokalemia promptly is crucial to prevent life-threatening cardiac complications. Question 7. A nurse is caring for a patient with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, who is experiencing increased shortness of breath. The nurse notes that the patient is using accessory muscles to breathe and has a respiratory rate of 28 breaths per minute. What should the nurse do first? A. Administer the prescribed bronchodilator. B. Increase the oxygen flow rate. C. Monitor the patient's blood pressure and heart rate. D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. The correct answer is A. Administer the prescribed bronchodilator. Rationale for correct answer. In COPD patients with increased shortness of breath, bronchodilators help to open the airways and improve oxygenation, which is the priority intervention. Rationale for incorrect answers. B. Increase the oxygen flow rate. Oxygen should be administered based on the patient's oxygen saturation levels. But the first step is to relieve airway constriction with a bronchodilator. C. Monitor the patient's blood pressure and heart rate. While vital signs are important, addressing the airway obstruction is the priority. D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. Notification may be necessary, but bronchodilator administration should be the first action. Clinique RN Test Day Tip For COPD patients, always administer bronchodilators first to alleviate airway constriction before increasing oxygen or notifying the healthcare provider. Question 8. A nurse is caring for a patient who is undergoing hemodialysis. The patient reports feeling lightheaded and weak, and their blood pressure is 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer a fluid bolus to increase blood pressure. B. Slow the dialysis rate to reduce fluid shifts. C. Increase the dialysis rate to improve fluid removal. D. Stop the dialysis treatment immediately. The correct answer is B. Slow the dialysis rate to reduce fluid shifts. Rationale for correct answer. Hypotension during dialysis is often due to rapid fluid removal. Slowing the dialysis rate allows for more gradual fluid removal and prevents further hypotension. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Administer a fluid bolus to increase blood pressure. Administering fluids too rapidly may worsen the underlying cause of hypotension. Fluid shift due to dialysis. C. Increase the dialysis rate to improve fluid removal. Increasing the rate could worsen hypotension and increase the risk of complications. D. Stop the dialysis treatment immediately. Stopping dialysis should only occur if the patient is in severe distress or there are other complications, but slowing the rate is typically effective in preventing hypotension. Clinique RN Test Day Tip Monitor blood pressure closely during dialysis. If hypotension occurs, slow the dialysis rate and ensure gradual fluid removal to prevent further complications. Question 9. A nurse is caring for a patient who is receiving an IV fusion of vancomycin. The patient begins to complain of itching and a red rash on the upper body. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Continue the vancomycin infusion and monitor the patient for further reactions. B. Stop the infusion immediately and notify the healthcare provider. C. 
Administer an antihistamine as prescribed. D. Apply a cool compress to the rash. The correct answer is B. Stop the infusion immediately and notify the healthcare provider. Rationale for correct answer. The symptoms of itching and rash may indicate an allergic reaction or red man syndrome, which can occur with vancomycin infusion. The infusion should be stopped immediately and the healthcare provider should be notified for further guidance. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Continue the vancomycin infusion and monitor the patient for further reactions. Continuing the infusion could worsen the reaction. C. Administer an antihistamine as prescribed. While antihistamines may help, stopping the infusion is the priority to prevent worsening of the reaction. D. Apply a cool compress to the rash. A cool compress may offer relief, but stopping the infusion is more urgent. Clinique RN Test Day Tip Be alert for signs of allergic reactions to medications like vancomycin. Always stop the infusion if an adverse reaction occurs and notify the healthcare provider immediately. Question 10. A nurse is caring for a patient with a history of hypertension who has been prescribed a beta blocker. The nurse should monitor for which of the following potential adverse effects? A. Tachycardia. B. Bradycardia. C. Hypoglycemia. D. Hyperkalemia. The correct answer is B. Bradycardia. Rationale for correct answer. Beta blockers slow the heart rate, and bradycardia is a common side effect. Rationale for incorrect answers. A. Tachycardia. Beta blockers are used to reduce tachycardia, not cause it. C. Hypoglycemia. Beta blockers can mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia, but they do not typically cause it directly. D. Hyperkalemia. Beta blockers are not typically associated with hyperkalemia, although some other medications, example, ACE inhibitors, may cause it. Clinique RN Test A Tip. Monitor the heart rate in patients receiving beta blockers, particularly if it falls below 60 beats per minute. Bradycardia can be a serious side effect requiring dose adjustment. Thanks for watching. Check out our free practice challenge in QBank by clicking the link in the YouTube card above. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more NCLEX content.